Let's talk about Red Hair Jank. So Red Hair Jank is one of the four Yonko and probably one of the most popular characters in the One Piece of Earth. Now, he has conquered hockey and he can use a sword and he most likely, almost definitely, I guess you can say, and you know what? He has it. He has arm in hockey and he has observation hockey. Okay, that's all we know about him power wise. He was introduced in Chapter 1 of the One Piece manga when he gave Luffy his straw hat. And I feel like here is a good place to start. Because there's, there's, there is this huge debate about how Jank lost his arm, how someone of his caliber could lose his arm. This is a man that sailed with Gold Roger. Jank is the cabin boy of the Roger Pirates. And I, I'm gonna get more into that later, but this boy served under Roger. He's no joke. Just like, you say what you want about Buggy. I, I'll, I'll probably do an entire discussion video on Buggy, but I don't think Buggy's a joke, and I don't think Jenks is a joke. So how could he lose his arm to a freaking sea king? So, this is the conclusion I came to as you're reading up on it. Apparently, it was a decision by an editor. To have Shanks lose his arm. That was not Oda's choice. Oda wanted Shanks to keep his arm. But. His editor felt that. If he kept his arm. It was just too simple. Too simplistic. Not difficult enough. Which I kind of agree with. It's like. Luffy backstory alone. Is already kind of pathetic. It's like. Oh my guy I look up to. Lost his arm. And gave me a hat. And he bailed. It's like, not, Robin's like, my entire culture and my entire island and all my people were killed and destroyed, bitch. I mean, really, like, Luffy's backstory is pathetic. Look at Sanji's backstory. Like, Luffy's backstory is pathetic, so I kind of get from that perspective why they did that. So that was why Shanks lost his arm. I firmly believe that Shanks had really wanted to, and we hadn't been in the very beginning of the story, Shanks would have just been like, Armed in hockey and armored up, but he also wanted to give his arm for Luffy. He gave up his arm in a bet on the new generation, which is something he talked about with Whitebeard, which I'll get to later. So, aside for that flashback, Shanks doesn't really appear at all, really. There's one, there's one thing I believe where he's talking to a rock star, where he sends his new recruit rock, rock star to talk to Whitebeard. Whitebeard tears up the letter and he thinks has to go there himself. So then he does go there himself and we get the first real display of Jenks' power. So he's having a conversation with him and he reveals that his scars, the one he has on, on his eye, uh, Cheech gave it to him. Blackbeard gave him those scars. And he talked about how he got in a lot of, he'd been in a lot of battles, but Blackbeard's the only one that ever got it, wounded him like that. Like, Blackbeard got him good. And he revealed that he wasn't being careless. Like, this wasn't something he got from a duel with Mihawk, and he wasn't being freaking careless. Like, Blackbeard is dangerous. So, he talks to him, and he talks to him how he wants Whitebeard to call Ace back. Whitebeard, of course, is like, bitch. It's like, bitch. I was kicking, I was fighting your captain on equal footing when you were a toddler. You will show me respect on Whitebeard, bitch. The Whitebeard, like, came at him with his, uh, Samoto. I forgot what I think I called it, with his staff. I forgot the actual Japanese word for it, I'll have to look it up. I'll probably put it on screen, maybe. But, um, you know, he comes at him, they're, they're, they clash. And Jenks like splits the heavens. Like, their conquer hockey is actually splitting the heavens. And mind you, when Jank was entering the ship of the White Beard Pirates, he conquered hockey alone with knocking people out. Now, these aren't scrubs. These are members of the White Beard Pirates. So, this is a big deal. Like, Jank is a very strong dude. Now, then there's a court. That's pretty much the last, not the last time we see him. Until uh, he had name dropped uh, somewhere around Marine Ford, where it mentioned that him and Kaido are confronting or fighting in the New World. We don't know why. 
from what our, 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 we don't know be that reason, we don't know but detailed. All we really know is that Kaido wanted to interfere with the war and take out Whitebeard. And Jenks didn't want him to interfere, so Jenks died that them and was like, no. And they fought. And this is where things get interesting. So, Jenks fought Kaido in the New World. And somehow got to Marine during. Mind you, this, this battle took place on the day of the war. So, he managed to fight Kaido, get to Navy headquarters. And by the way, he wasn't damaged. Like, when the Red Hair Pirates show up at Navy headquarters, it, they're all fine. It's not just like, oh, Shanks is okay. He's a Yoko. Ben Beckman is fine. Uh, I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, Rockstar is fine. All the members of the, white, of the Red Hair Pirates are fine. None of them are injured. And I may do a video discussing the Red Hair Pirates as a crew in more detail. This video is mostly a Shanks himself video. So tell me if you guys want me to do crew discussion. Like the character discussion, but just based around the crews. Tell me in the comments. But, so Shanks is... This is, this is going to be where things get really weird. They, they're not injured. So, th there are only two possibilities. Either something fishy is going on, which is what it most likely is. Or Shanks and his crew are so damn strong they beat Kaido without getting damaged, which I don't believe. I refuse to believe that the gap between them is that big. So there's definitely something going on there. And then there's the fact that I don't give a shit what, what you say. There is no way they were battling close enough to the red line that Jenks could just walk to Marine Ford. Like, he just, like, well, he might as well just walked it there. Like, he got there within a matter of minutes. Like, he, he must have gotten there within a matter of an hour, two, three hours. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, Jenks had some sort of ability. Like, something happened there. Now... Shank then comes in when he arrives, he blocks the attack, stops it from killing Kobe, and he ends the war. Like, he's like, we're not gonna fight anymore, leave the body with me. But this is the interesting part. The Navy, well, they were weakened. They had just fought Whitebeard. The three admirals weren't beaten. Like, well, Yak I knew was kind of a little, a little messed up. That guy ain't doing kind of messed up, but they weren't really defeated. Like, the Admiral could fight for a much longer period. Hell, Akainu and Alkiji fought for 10 days on Punk Hazard. So, the, the only conclusion is that the Navy didn't think they could take Shank. Like, they clearly didn't think they could take Shank. Because they, they didn't want it. They, they were like, no, we're not fighting Shank. Like, they were like, no. It, it, Mihawk! Friggin' Mihawk was like, I'm out. Like, I agreed to... Like, he wasn't... He was definitely more so like he just didn't want to fight Shanks. But even Mihawk was like, I did not agree to fight Shanks. Like, I did not come here today with the intention of using all my power in a fight with this guy. So, that, that's the worst thing get very, very interesting. So... But conclusion of the country, the Navy couldn't stop Jank. And what did that say? Because Akainu, I would say, was around... Akainu had to at least be above, like, 30% like thirty percent of his power. Maybe, like, a 30, 40%. He definitely was at more than 10% of his power, even after his fight with Whitebeard. And he took out all the division commanders at once. So... The logical, the logical conclusion is, of course, that the three animals aren't enough. Like, they can't mess with the guy. And it's really impressive that James has attained this level of fear in the world. Like, this is how afraid people are of him. Considering his crew seems to be, like, 10 to 15 people. It's incredibly bizarre. So, James has got to be ridiculously strong. The yeah, depth it isn't a numbered thing. The Navy had them vastly outnumbered, but they did not want to fight these guys. How, if you want an example for how strong Shanks did, okay, 
I know this scene is questionable because we're talking about Barcelona here, or we're talking about or Kizaru. We're talking about Kizaru. Kizaru's a freaking troll. Yeah, like, Kizaru looks like he's on. Kizaru looks like he's on crack. Whenever he talks, really, the guy looks like he's high. He really does. The guy looks like he's high. So, but then Beckman appeared behind him, and he was like, "Don't you move, Kizaru?" And Kizaru was just like, "Okay." Like, okay, oi oi, Ben Beckman, I'm out. Like, I'm not doing that. Now, if Kizaru, so take that, take of that what you will. But Ben Beckman was still confident enough to hold an admiral that can move at light speed at gunpoint. And you would not slide it in the all here. Like, Ben Beckman was clearly incredibly confident that he had the situation under control. So, what did that say about the captain? Like, it kind of would be kind of be like if Nora was to do what Ben Beckman did, what would that say about how strong Luffy is? Alright. So there are, there are a couple ideas I want, that have been tossed around about Shanks, and I want to talk about them. This won't be as long as my normal discussion that you're going to talk about with Shanks, but yeah. The so one thing I want to talk about is do I think Shanks is a devil fruit? I'll be honest, guys, I don't really think Shanks has a devil fruit. I really don't. I just, I don't. I think Oda definitely seems to be going for some really hockey-oriented character. I mean, whenever Shanks does anything on screen, he does it with either a sword or he uses hockey. When he claps with Whitebeard, they split the heavens. I think I think it would maybe set in an FBS somewhere to think Shank could have taken out everybody on Fifth Man Island. So, that's just. Shank is incredibly powerful, and I'm a firm believer that Oda's going for more of a hockey based career. Like, you have all these other characters, like Kaido, Blackbeard. Blackbeard's whole thing is Devil First. Big Mom and her soul soul for Kaido with whatever he had that makes him immortal. It's a demon of Devil First. I don't. I, I, I don't know. Like,. Kaido, I said that's a whole other video, but I feel like with Jenks, he's going for a hockey-oriented crew, hockey users only, just really strong-ass guy. Like, no special, no real special crazy Delafru power, just conquer hockey, observation hockey, and armament hockey. I feel like that's what Oda is going for in that regard. Now, what I want to talk about is something related to Shanks and time. Shanks can control time. Okay? In Pirate Warrior 3, that was Shanks' ability. Like, that was his thing. They, they wanted to put Shanks in the game because Shanks is cool. Shanks would make them make more money. So, they put Shanks in the game. But time's manipulating power. Okay, I'm just going to get this out of the way. Shanks Cannot control freaking time. Thank you. There is no way in hell Shanks would ever, I mean, Oda would ever reveal Shanks' ability in a video game. Shanks' ability. Shanks in general. I mean, did you see? I've talked about three. Okay, I'm talking about a, a character history in a theory. That it's that it's 855 chapters as of the recording of this video. And if it, I I had to I had to I only talked about I talked about three things, and I had to drag each topic out to make this video a decent length. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is. Like there's like it's it in Enigma. We know like nothing about him. There is no way Oda would reveal his secret sensation powers in a video game. Also, time manipulation is way too overpowered, even for Shank. That is a whole other level of broken that I don't think Oda wants to touch. And there's one thing Oda has been really good at is not introducing abilities that breaks the story. And time manipulation should never be introduced into a form of fiction. I can just know. No, Dragon Ball Super, Future Trunks Dark, 
fairy tale. The bullshit with the dragon. No, 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 you don't. Time and time travel, time powers are stupid. They never go anywhere. And I don't think Oda is a dumb enough of a writer to introduce a concept like that. Now, through the corpus theory, as I mentioned earlier, he can play the hockey base. Which I think that's the most likely conclusion that Shank has no real grandiose abilities. They just, he's hockey bait, he got really strong ass hockey, and yeah. Now I do want to quickly talk about Makino! There was a cover page a while back with Makino and a baby. Um, I do think Shank is the father. I'm not sure when he would have returned to Fusha Village, but I think he would have returned to it at some point. Maybe some point after Ace's death, he returns to Fusha Village. Fusha Village. And I do believe in Fusha Village would be where Shank would impregnate Makino, be that's where Makino lives. And yeah, that's my opinion on that. I talked about his sense of power, I talked about his character, future role of the theory. Alright, I'm gonna be very brief with this. I don't see Shanks doing much for a while. I don't think we're going to be seeing him often. But what I do think is that I'm a firm believer in the theory that Shanks and Blackbeard are going to end up fighting and Shanks is going to die and Luffy is going to arrive right after that. I think that is a very likely possibility. And it's also very likely that Luffy and Shanks will reunite and your crew will fight. Because in a shonen battle manga, there isn't really any other way for Luffy to cr prove that the Straw Hats are better than the Red Haired Pirate besides fighting them. And I feel like one that would be really cool. Like imagine Usopp versus Yasop. Like imagine that for a moment. But yeah, I do believe there are, really there are two outcomes I see. Either Luffy Shanks dies in the hand of Blackbeard, or we get a Luffy and Shanks fight. And begin, I think at the end of the Luffy and Shanks fight, Shanks will be like, You keep the hat. You're the better pirate. You deserve the hat. Besides, they call you Straw Hat for a reason. And I believe in, in the situation where he died at Teach's hand, or where he was defeated and, and died after Luffy arrived and got to speak with Luffy one last time, he will let Luffy keep the Straw Hat. Now, that's pretty much all I have to say on Jank. Tell me whatever you want to tell me about Jank in the comment section down below. If you have any Jank related videos you want me to do, tell me. I really like Jank. He's one of my favorite characters. I want to talk about him more. There's just not much to talk about with Jank. He rarely shows up and does anything. There have been points where we've gone five years without seeing the guy. I hope you enjoyed this little video on Akagame, on Akagame no Shensu. Hope you enjoyed. I may do videos on the other Yonko, but I may wait to do the Big Mom video until Hulk King Island is over. I hope you enjoyed. Like the video if you did and want more videos like this. Subscribe for more One Piece videos. I do a ton of stuff like this. Um. Tell me your thoughts in the comments, follow me on Facebook, check out my Twitter, all that crap. Check out my other videos, all that. Have a nice day, this is One Piece Nation, signing out.